Hi again, welcome to the Garage on Pierre. It's been requested a few times, been talked about a few times, and finally you're getting it. Dial bore gauges. Let's see, uh, let's see, let's see how to use them. Let's see uh, what they're used for, and let's see uh, how they compare to some uh, some of the tools. So let's see. Dial bore gauge is considered like a comparing tool. More often than anything else, you'll be asked to control a certain value there. We uh, just got our value from the uh, three mics, uh, the three point mics, and we want to know if, let's say, uh, in a car, the cylinder, does a cylinder meet that uh, requirement uh, bore? So we're going to be using the uh, double gauge for a good, it's a very good instrument for doing this. Okay, now we know the value we want to control is. Three, one inch, three, three, 139.1 uh, thousandths. So we'll be looking in here, and what we see here, we got 0.7 to 1.4. The, the range of this one is 0.7 to 1.4. This is going with the set there. We'll be looking in here, we got 1.3, so we got 1.3. One thing we must know is that if we just put this straight in there, that little pin in here, that little retracting pin, if I press on this, you're going to see the uh, dial goes a few rotations. This gives us a little bit more than 20 thousandths uh, range. So if we go from 1.3 to 1.320, we're not exactly there yet. So what we're going to have to do, because the box here contains some washers, the purpose of those washers is to uh, increase the value at which we're going. I'm going to be adding a 20 thousandths of an inch washer there. Let's be careful because I don't want to go run under the table for this one. Okay, we're going to be adding the washer plus the pin at the other end. Let's see, the, this is the uh, push, you know, the, the, the push button there. And you see that uh, pushing it, but this, this is the fix button here, the fix stem. Just slightly tight, that's good enough. Don't over tight this because you're going to have problems. Now we're needing to calibrate this dial bore gauge to read this measurement. So we get a uh, micrometer here and the value we want, and just uh, this has been calibrated before, and the value we want is 1.3391. So I'm going to be, okay, I forgot the zero, I didn't preset it, but uh, it's going to be. Close three three nine one three three nine one. This is pretty fussy to adjust. Oh, we're close. This is a quantum mic. This gets. Uh, Four times faster on the on the uh, dial there, so it's a little uh, trickier to uh, to install. For this task, I would prefer the other one, but let's say we're half a tenth off, which is acceptable, more than likely. So we're going to take this bore gauge here. We're going to put the. Uh, dial here. Let me get let me make some room. A little bit more. Okay, so got our value there. And what we're going to do is to insert this in there. Now the distance between those two parts here is exactly the uh, bore we need to control. So what we need to do now is get the maximum deflection on the uh, on the gauge there. So the maximum deflection would be just there. I'll put the zero near where it is. Oops, I need the, another another tenth of a thousand. Huh? Oh no, we're pretty close. Okay, we get maximum deflection on the. Uh, Dial there, it's zeroed, and make sure that uh, that little uh, 
that second dial there, which is just past four. Make sure you go back to the same place because you can be uh, ten thousandths off uh, if you don't get the, you don't respect the right, uh, the right area. Okay. Now we we'll take our cylinder, which is supposed to be one point three three nine one at the opening, and see if this comes up and matches the zero. Let me uh, reinstall the camera a little bit better. Now we install this in there, we just kind of one side at a time and we're going to try to get maximum deflection in here. Let's get it a little deeper, okay about there, that should be good. So we're going there and we're pretty near the zero. Let me just, uh, I can see two. So maximum deflection, we're getting about uh, half a tenth of a thousand. Just let me get that. Okay, that's it. Oh, we're getting zero. That's good. So this is at full deflection, maximum deflection. We're getting exactly the reading on the micrometer, and we're exactly the reading on the... Uh, and this uh, cylinder will be exactly in the specs. So we're measuring exactly the same thing. That's pretty good. So tolerance between this and the uh, three point and the three points mic, very close. And there's another way that we can measure with this. And uh, I think we can get pretty accurate results too. It's uh, almost like a direct reading. This time we're going to just leave it like that. I mean, it's already a little bit under tension. I'm going to zero the dial on the top there. That's pretty well zero. And I'm going to measure exactly the distance between those points there. Oops, unlock this. And as soon as I feel a little bit of deflection on the, uh, on the meter there, I'm there. It's, uh, okay, we're there. I'm going to be trying to get the high point. See if I get deflection there. I got too much uh, tension on this. Deflection, no. I'm feeling a little bit of pressure, very tiny pressure, and no deflection. So I know now that this distance in between those two things measures 1 inch 347.8. 1 47 8 tenths. Let's just write it down. Let's take this now and let's get in there. Enter this end at first and let's see how much deflection I'm going to get on this here. Now I need to get the maximum deflection, that's important. Yeah, that's about there. Okay, I'm uh, 2.4, uh, uh, sorry, this is 5 thousandths, this is 6, 7, 8. Eight thousandths. And six tenths. Let's go and we'll subtract this. If we look at this uh, first control measure, we get this with the three points micrometer. We get this, uh, we compare with uh, the gauge here. We're very close on this. We read uh, some kind of a more direct reading. We get this is one tenth off, which is excellent as uh, repeatability and depending upon sometimes where in the bore you uh, you take the measurement. So that might vary a little bit. Something else you can do with this. This uh, bore here 
It's a special preparation I did, and uh, I'll show you what it is. Okay, when I board this cylinder, which is the this is the cylinder here, the fr I made the first cut here, which is the red cut here, the the, the red line. I took ten thousandths on this cut, on the radius. Stop about an inch inside there. Just about. Stop there, pulled out, and readjust my boring bar, and I took another ten thousandths. So the total was twenty thousandths. So when I started here, the second pass, it was grabbing ten thousandths. When I got here, it was starting to grab the twenty thousandths. I purposely took a you know, the smallest bar, uh, boring bar, and the deflection here, the tool pressure and deflection here, started to change, and the, bo the boring bar didn't make the same measurements here than it made on the first uh, final passes there. So let's see, let's see what it does actually with the uh, dial bore gauge. Dial bore gauge is also used to measure if a cylinder is elliptical, or, you know, like a oval or uh, just uh, you know the same diameter in the bottom the middle and the top and you can you can control many parameters of a cylinder with this so it's like I explained see see what there we'll see what the result of uh, making some you know uh, uneven boring could maybe do on that on a cylinder like this so we're near the top of the cylinder we're getting maximum deflection we're going about We're going about uh, we're we're pretty much on the on the nose there, maybe one tenth over or smaller. But uh, let's go a little bit deeper. Like uh, I'll be going a little bit over an inch, but I'll be uh, I'm about here. The uh, I'm about two inches and uh, maybe and a half down. So we're measuring, going for maximum deflection here, and you see that we're. Uh, Always in the same range there with the little dial there, but we're come on. And we're getting irregularities in there. Okay, now we get it. I'm getting uh, about two thousandths smaller because going there is more deflection means it's smaller. And let's go near. We're going to be pretty much near the uh, bottom of it. Let's go for maximum deflection again. So there we're getting like uh, two point. 2.4 thousand smaller than <coughs> we get at the first inch. Now you know that uh, important thing when you bore something, always use the full pass, use the same, the same tool pressure all the time because you're going to get uh, something that's going to be very irregular. And we can also measure, let's go back to the first part here. Let's measure if the cylinder would be round or would have, let's say, an oval shape or something. Okay, we're pretty, uh, are we turning about 60 degrees every time? This cylinder is, like when we can see, is very round, very regular on the, on the surface there, except it's going a little bit as a, you know, it's going a little bit as a cone or it, it shrinks down because of the uh, poor boring method that I just uh, explained to you. Also, as a last uh, kind of comparison, because lots of people use those uh, telescopic gauges, we'll make a comparison to see how, how close the uh, Mitutoyo telescopic gauge would get to, uh, you know, the uh, measurement around there. Let's tie this up. Snap it, put that aside to have an easy, uh, easy access. 
Okay. Ah. Let's take the subjective part out of this. There we go. Okay, we're close. Oops, a little bit too tight. Uh, that should be about it. We're about uh, half of a tenth of a thousand off with this. I mean, this is a pretty excellent method too. Dial bore gauge, uh, three points micrometer, uh, telescopic gauges. They all give excellent results. The results are going to be very dependent from your handling, from your, uh, you know, the uh, temperature from all kinds of uh, external factors. So be very careful when you measure. Just be very tall. Repeat your measurements a few times and uh, that will uh, really get uh, get you uh, very close from uh, the, the, what, what I consider real results. I think we've got enough material to conclude. We've been using the dial bore gauge. We've been using the three points micrometer. We've been using the uh, telescopic gauge measuring this cylinder there. And if you remember the preparation I did to uh, maybe emphasize on certain defects that we can measure uh, very easily with the, bore, with the dial bore gauge uh, according to maybe not exactly perfect machining practices so you can control yourself using the, uh, the tool. It's very accurate. Handling is very important. Uh, also the one thing that you got to be very careful is to keep temperature as constant as possible because when you play in the tens of thousands of inches uh, any a few degrees like a let's say 5, 10 degrees Celsius will make a huge difference if they don't, you know, if the parts or the measuring instruments don't follow up the same curve or same temperature. So that will, that will bring you uh, trouble and it will bring you very uh, wide errors. So be careful, get everything at the same temperature, everything in the same environment, try to uh, be patient, be very careful, very delicate on the handling. Uh, practice. I mean, it's another thing I can, uh, I can say again. I said it on some other uh, videos about uh, metrology and measurement. Practice. Get your touch. Get your touch right. Get your uh, feelings right. Practice with something, you know, let's say you get, uh, this is a calibrated uh, ring. Use something like this or find something that you know the measure is right and try to get those measures with your instruments. That's uh, like anything else. You get good as you do it. That's it. That's it. Come back next time. Here's a little bonus. Little Phillips in class, and uh, he remember the teacher asking around the class, and uh, the question was, "How would you like to die?" And little Phillips says, uh, "Oh, I'd like to die by, uh, to die like my grandpa." How did your grandpa die? Oh, he died in his sleep. Oh, that, that's a peaceful death, you know, like Yuri. He was lucky. Oh yeah, and. Uh, what would be the most horrible way to die? And Philip thinks again, say, uh, I think it was like my grandpa's friends. How'd they die? They were in the car when my grandpa fell asleep. <laughs>